G'day, Michael here. I'm finding myself using um, OpenSCAD more and more, and the reason for that is I'm doing a lot of thread work to match parts like this. This is a you know, something you can buy in a shop. Uh, it's a plumbing fitting. Inch and a half BSP is the thread. And I'm making adapters for like filtration and, and um, yeah, pumps and things like that. This adapter here goes from uh, like it's a plastic tank with a very coarse inch pitch, no, sorry, quarter inch pitch thread, three inch outside diameter. Yes, we have to use inches because that's they're probably a US standard for all I know. But the inside standard is a British one, British standard pipe. So we get a mishmash of different um, thread standards. Anyhow, this here is a design that does that in OpenSK. You think, how the hell does that do that? I have no method for producing such a thread in Vericad. Now this is, I'll just um, undo that, go back to what I had before. This is actually pretty much the part I require, but I can't do the thread with Vericad because it is a tapered thread. And so it's, you know, I'm feeling um, very much limited in what I can do with a pointy click here. You can do like a regular thread, but a tapered thread's another problem. Um, yeah. Now, open SCAD, this is the part, I'll just make that do something slightly different. This is the part, not quite the right size. I'm in the process of doing some working out. But I can have it so by including a file, which is in fact what I did with that last one. I included a file, I'll just go control plus a couple of times so you can read it as well. I've included a file called threads.scad and this is a parameter that I wanted to set up to do a calculation because I want to work in metric even though I'm using an imperial thread. I want the length to be determined as uh, 20 millimeters. So I've converted this thing from my millimeter length divided by 25.4 gives us the inch length. What's very cute is if we open that threads. Videos, no, that one. Threads.scad, which is right there, it is. Open with open SCAD, there we go. It's uh, Someone has done a lot of effort. Now that someone, I believe, is Dan Kirshner at the yahoo.com is his email address, that's nice of um, And he's followed ISO standards, yada yada yada. There are people that have contributed along the way. Anyhow, these guys have done some fantastic work. I don't yet fully understand the inner workings of this, but I'm learning it fast. And the beautiful thing is, you can download SCAD files of people that have gone through the process of coming up with a decent logic um, and creating these sorts of designs uh, and basically stand on their shoulders because they've got the experience and they've gone through the effort of resolving this design, being open source. Uh, we can build that. Now if you think of some modification to that and you want to build on it, you've got to share that back the same way it's been shared to you. Now, um, this is it's beautiful work. It really, I, I can't commend these people enough for the effort they put into things. Um, in any case, going back to that, I've used that other SCAD file by just going include. Right? I've set up some parameter to suit myself. It's gonna be the length of the thread. And then I've called a module within that open SCAD file. Well, let's have a look at English thread. Okay, so we're looking for a module English thread. There's a module metric thread, which does all of that, whatever that is. Metric tones, metric English thread. Here we go. And here's English thread. And what it does is it converts all your parameters from inches back to millimeters, and then runs the module metric thread. So I'm finding this a little bit amusing. I want to use the imperial thread 
with one parameter that's metric. I shove that, um, I calculate that, that parameter, convert it to imperial here, shove it through this English thread, which then gets converted back to metric and shoved through the metric thread creator. So I find that a little bit, that's amusing. But it just shows you the power of the, the scripting language. So this is what I had to create to make that happen using threads.scad and OpenSCAD to do it. I have no method for that on Vericad. So it just shows you how powerful it is for like um, anything that needs kind of a decision or a thinking process or mathematical process. OpenSCAD can crunch it out if you can build the logic for it. And if you've got something like threads, there's people that have done um, like timing bell uh, pulleys and things like that. Um, so you can really utilize the power of the fact that it's a programmable interface from the ground up. There are not actually that many instructions. That's it. We're looking at it here. I'll just maximize that. So if you get a good look at this, this is the language. Of course, you can go to the website and other links, but this is what they call the cheat sheet. And if there's something you want to, that looks about right for whatever you want to look at, let's say you want to know what, I don't know, rotate extrude, extrude. Let's just have a look at that. And they show you there's a pentagon, rotate extrude gives that. There's a circle, rotate extrude gives that, but it might be a bit too, too low resolution. So you bump up this. String FS, FN equals um, the facet number. That gives you a much finer thing. So they've chosen 100 here, gives 100 facets. So you can see that the quality of the whole thing is just uh, at your disposal. You can make it as fine or as coarse. Obviously coarse is quick, less work, less size, etc. Higher the resolution is, the more work it is for the computer. So it's as simple as that. Okay, now I've got this Cyclone Elbow. Um, here I've got it set up so I can go call English Shred, but I'm actually going to comment that out. I'm going to comment that out as well, because I don't actually want it to regenerate that thread every time, because it takes a month of Sundays to do that thread, because it's a lot of work. Okay, now, have I done this one? Have I saved it? Save it as an STL. So it's... Copy that. So that's been saved. Now I'm going to go in here. Import. This is the beauty of the whole thing. That. Control V. Close. Close brackets. Semicolon. So I can substitute the, the STL file for that. So let's go. With good luck, that should all go right now. Here's hoping. It still has to cut all those segments out of the part that's there. in there we can see here that the thread is cut out in this space here and that was loaded from that STL file so it's kind of handy that we can use the STL file to work within um, OpenSCAD most CAD programs don't like you working on an STL but here we are I was actually able to use it as, as a tool inside the design so the beautiful thing is um, we can use STL files we can also use DXF files let's just have a look at the DXF file usage gasket that'll be. So let's just go F6. So let's just created that design. 
from this this line here one line created that well not quite let's just have a look at the actual DXF that loaded that one open recent okay let's just make the old unit visible okay so here's zero zero so that's important to remember that's zero zero and we've got two um, we've got two layers on this this unit's called this layer is called outline and this layer is called gasket and so that um, OpenSCAD can tell which one it's using it's just going to use the layer of um, in this case gasket if you have a look at that you can see the section is we should be able to see more information there there we go so you can see the segments it's made out of now if I was happy to have like five segments if that's what I wanted a pentagon with that section I can do that too here we've got a pentagon with that section if I wanted to have it much finer I could make it 500 segments and you can see this process is pretty simple because um, it's extruding that one shape whereas the thread I was doing on the other design is much harder to do you can see how that's above zero but otherwise it's centered I'll just try and lay that flat there we go so there we are looking at that axis going back to there's QCAD center point and that's over here so going back to that then that you can see it's over here I'll, I'll turn off the outline center point there so that's been extruded around the donut okay so we can import DXF files there are actually quite a range of files you can import so there's import gone there you go so STL OFF AMF 3MF I haven't actually used those two STL I've used 3MF I've used DXF and SG, SVG I don't know what CSG but you can actually import a PNG file like it's a grayscale or even color uh, to produce a like a contour let's see if they've got that here here we go so there's like a bitmap and I think they've got there we go so there's an input image and you can use it to create like uh, a contour based on its grayness so things like um, what do they call it I can't think what it's called now but basically uh, 3d printing a translucent material thicker makes it darker thinner makes it lighter so here you've got the method of just using whatever input image and outputting the image so this is kind of cool OpenSCAD has got a lot of talent and normally I thought of those things having special programs that'll do that well actually it's kind of all built into OpenSCAD it's quite quite powerful the only thing I find myself difficult is you can't just add a fillet here and put a chamfer there casually like you can on say Vericad like if I want to put uh, a chamfer right there I can go three that and I can do this casually and five so that's easy on Vericad I can't do that with OpenSCAD you have to plan it in having said that these four are these business here now I've got this cylinder here is actually that cone section and this cylinder is actually the vertical going through so and that was repeated and rotated automatically so if I change any of those features and rerun it it affects all of those screws so if I had a number of screws maybe if I was 50 or 100 of them around the design that all be modified with it so there's a lot of you know you kind of invest up front with OpenSCAD but you get back when you do a modification if you built the design right so yeah it's very very talented and there's some things you just well like the taper thread is extremely difficult there's there's not that many programs that can handle it 
Well, I guess that's enough talking. I, I guess um, if there's something you think I should add in the next videos, so let me know. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, ask a question, leave a comment. Bye for now.